So not long ago, I purchased a brand new 12 inch compound miter saw as a trim saw for my sawmill. The idea being a cleaner than chainsaw cut with no fuel and almost no sharpening. But chainsaws are reliable, portable, and don't need to be comfortable. So there's a reason I have been using them to cut the ends off boards for the last decade or two. Well as usual, I decided to jump in with both feet and just bought one to see if it would work. And so Mike and I whipped up a 16 foot long chop saw stand for the big yellow and rounded up a car tent I already had to keep the rain and snow off. Because let's face it, chop saws aren't outdoor enthusiasts. This was probably the first moment that I questioned whether this was a good idea or not. Hey, if you grab that corner there and I grab this corner, maybe we can get it to... Oh, look at this. We are sailing. After we took advantage of a little wind energy to move the tent into position, we ended up with a highly productive facility for that chop saw, and we ran it for several days with no issues, and it was awesome. But weather has a way of winning in the end. And one day I came to work and this is what the tent looked like. And this is when I started wondering, how is this tent supposed to protect a car if it can't even protect a chop saw? I'll bet I could whip up something from scratch in a couple days that would be better than that thing. You know, some other tents are made of wood. Teepees are actually made of wood. I recently built one for a customer, big one. And that got me thinking, maybe I can make this tent out of wood as well. Okay, so we had an epic windstorm the last couple days and it totally destroyed this tent over here. So I'm gonna take you guys on this little weekend journey. It's uh, Saturday, it's pretty late in the day already and I need to rebuild this tent frame out of something sturdier. I need something to protect this guy because it's a pretty valuable little chop saw and uh, if we just leave it outside, it's gonna get snowed on. It's gonna basically rust away to nothing. So I just need some sort of roof over it. Plus it's a lot more comfortable for actually using it. I'm the kind of the chop saw operator person right now. We're gonna do a quick build, nothing too fancy. It has to be done by Monday. So like I've got today and tomorrow. And yeah, this uh, tent is a 20 feet by 10 feet and it's got this, I don't know, 30 degree pitch or something on the roof here. And the reason it fell apart is because it wiggles around like crazy. This tent, it's gonna be way better when it's made of wood. So far I've dumped like three or four hours into just setting the tent up and then having it blow away in the wind and then putting it back up and then it's slowly getting more and more haggard to the point where now I'm done with it. No more tent frame. I'm gonna build my own and it's gonna be sturdier and made of wood. So stick around for that. We're gonna be quick and not too pretty. Well, if it's pretty, it's just by accident, not by design. I know it's not by design because that's my entire plan. That's all I came up with. I did about five seconds and then decided, yeah, that's good enough. Okay, I've come up with a plan. I'm gonna use six by sixes. No, I'm just kidding. I'm going to take these 6x6s and I'm going to rip them in half and then I'm going to rip them again and make 3x3s. And then those 3x3s will be the verticals for this structure. It only has to support its own weight and not get blown away by the wind, right? So how strong does it have to be? Pretty strong, obviously. But I think 3x3s should accommodate what I need to do with it. I'm going to grab a couple of these, throw them on the mill, cut, cut. 3 by 3s should make uh, 8 right there, 8 20 footers. I think that's enough.
Now that I have a bunch of stock to work with, I can focus on breaking things down into usable lengths and ironing out some of the details in my design. Okay, we have made some progress here. So, so we have some basically engineered trusses. Engineered. <laughs> I, uh, I engineered them myself. Let's get, uh, let's get a better shot of this. Uh, I have not put them together yet. I played around with the um, lengths and the angles a bit. So I went for a 30 degree here and a 60 degree over here. So. I'm going to do three trusses just like this and they're going to sit on top of two main beams and then there's going to be drop-ins so here we're going to have to do maybe a board like that and we'll do drop in roughly 10 footers it should be just under 10 footers and that'll be the uh, tie together the top really well i decided to use the chop saw in order to make the chop saw roof which I thought was appropriate so this Dewalt here came in real handy I was trying to figure out how I was going to be able to cut greater than 45 degrees because this thing only pitches 45 if you slide that over that's exactly 45 and I was like how am I going to do 60 and then I remembered we can actually rotate this over all the way to 60 degrees here and not too many of them do that, but this one does, which means that I can cut a 60 slope and then match that by cutting quickly. Just gotta swing this over and then you can do a 30 right there on the other side. And that gives you your total 90 degrees. So then when you put those two together, you end up with this here truss. We're joined again by our mill mascot, Bobby. Well, Bobby. What do you think of the engineered trusses, Bobby? Okay, see ya. There's very little daylight left. I think it's time for me to wrap this up for today. I feel like I'm on schedule. We'll see how the weather is tomorrow. It's warmed up a lot. It's like plus seven right now or something, which is unusual. It's February, it should be minus 20. Something I just thought of is like, maybe I shouldn't be trying to mimic something that fell apart. So I've basically copied the shape and the design of that tent behind me. But if you look here at how much flex there is in this thing, it does seem like I should stiffen it up somehow. I've made everything bigger, but that hasn't really addressed the design flaw. The spans between trusses is about 10 feet. If it was structural, it'd be like two by 12 for a 10 foot span. So definitely a little low on strength factor. So there's lots to do, only limited time to do it in. So I'm gonna get as much done as I can today.
And this is the part where I make a mistake. So working the weekend sometimes results in you not being able to get any parts because nothing's open in this small town. So I used what I had, which was nails, and they weren't quite long enough. And I just needed to get it tagged together. The idea being that I could actually tighten everything up later. We'll see if that works. Somehow the day got away from me here, so I decided to do a little bit of extra work and embrace it. And I seem to have created the world's tiniest timber frame structure. So I mortised out some slots here. You saw me do that earlier. Um, and now each of my posts is going to have a tenon on it. So I just cut these on the table saw. Uh, four cuts, maxed out the, the blade there. It's a little sloppy. You can see I've overcut here, but because of the shape of the uh, the blade, that saves me a lot of hand sawing. So yeah, I just basically need to cut that out on all of them and then probably finish this cut with a hand saw. A good chance there's some stuff in the middle there that I didn't get with the table saw. And then I have four posts and I need to make two more. And then I essentially have the whole structure other than bracing. Again, I'm gonna do lots of 45 degree bracing because I think that was the main thing missing here when you start looking at the tent design and where it went wrong. I think it just wasn't braced well enough. Due to the fact it's getting late and it's still quite windy, I'm gonna set it up tomorrow on Monday and uh, Mike can give me a hand with that. We go faster with two people anyway. It was too much to ask to have three days of nice weather in a row. So today, it looks like it's gonna rain. It's starting to now. It's kind of around zero, maybe two degrees. So it'll be rain. And as much as I hate to admit it, production has been affected and we're gonna have to stop producing product briefly and set up the tent. So David, we have boards coming off the mill and uh... yeah. We still have some work to do, it looks like. <laughs> it's ended up looking a lot like a timber frame building. It just is like miniature. It's like half size or quarter size. I feel yeah. like this is good prototyping for a greenhouse though. You could take this and turn it into a pretty substantial greenhouse with very little work. Would you like to give me a hand setting this up, Mike? Sure, yeah, I'll give you a hand. Okay. Maybe where I get crushed by my own creation here. I hope not. So the only thing we can't do is drop it on the Dewalt. That would defeat the whole point of it entirely. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. Although, oh, no. You remember when I used nails earlier? Yep. That's a good fit there. That's a bad joint there. We need more screws. That was nice, though. More screws. It's definitely started to affect the day a little bit here because now there's a truck here. We've got logs coming in and I'm still instead working on the tent. Plus we haven't really cut anything, but it looks really good. Look at that, looks nice. Normally time lapses work best if you keep working throughout your time lapse, but we had to quickly run off and deal with a grapple that almost fell off a loader. Crisis averted, we got back to setting up that tent. And let's see how it looks. good. It actually looks much better than it did before. Alright, if you
you enjoyed that, go ahead, give it a thumbs up and we'll see you in the next video. I basically need to get back to work. We have lots of piano wood to cut up here. While I've been messing around there, have a look at how much wood is built up on this side. Oh man, I need to process all that. And then I can get to work on the main pile of logs over here. Yeah.